Hello humans and welcome to my channel. I am FCA and the, my title name is 8 Anime 8 Lover 8, but I'm FCA and welcome again to my channel. Hello, hello, nice to see you. You look good today. Thank you for coming. I am uh, just a casual YouTuber. Um, Oh, I know that everybody has the dream of making it big on YouTube, uh, but I honestly don't think that I have the, um, the bring it in personality. I'm weird in a lot of the wrong ways. I tend to be a very angry person. I have a lot of rant videos. I'm very strongly opinionated, which pushes people off. And I'm just weird in non-relatable ways, which also pushes people off. Um... And my, my videos aren't very comeback-y in the sense of um, most YouTubers, you come to expect a certain way that they do things. There's a certain style about them that appeals to people and they keep coming back for it. I just bebop all over the place. I'm absolutely insane. Um, and sometimes it's utterly boring. I'm not a very exciting person. So why should you watch me? What should, you know, what should you know about me that you should come back for? Well, one, I'm, I feel more real than other bigger YouTubers because I feel like a lot of other YouTubers, which is fine, I watch, I'm very addicted to YouTube, but a lot of other YouTubers, um, a lot of the bigger ones, I feel like the reason they were able to make it big is one, because a lot of them started really early, like 2007 or, you know, before 2010, they started making videos on the Slightly Regular. Um, and another reason is that they had access to cameras. I feel like a lot of other people came from wealthy or, or you know, very upper middle class and above kind of financial backgrounds, which nothing against that. It's not that they're bad people or that they're wrong or liars or anything like that. But I feel like I can be more relatable with my struggles of not being able to go on fancy vacations. And when I have my video quality stuff and it slowly builds up, it's because I have to actually work and um, uh, some people have their own businesses and that's great. I'm just a little bit more casual with some weird colored hair, which by the way is a wig. I wear a lot of wigs. This is my, one of my favorite wigs, my green wig. I love this style of wig and I think that this color is great on me. Um, also, I do some makeup videos on Makeup Mondays, and then FCA Fridays are a little bit more like this video, where I just have a topic, and I talk about it, and I share it. Um, some of my videos are a little weird. I do a lot of videos with my significant other, whose name is Doug. I uh, go and visit him a whole bunch. And I do call him the Incubus, and it's from a long-running joke of when we first met um, eight or nine years ago. And we and we have fun together, and um, I hope you have fun with us and with me on my little YouTube journey. Uh, some of my videos are kind of creepy. Some of the videos are kind of intense, and you're like, whoa whoa and sometimes you're looking at it going what 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 and that's just sort of me <laughs> and I hope we can have fun together we don't have to be the best of friends but um if you can stand my weird voice which is weird to me because I sound like I'm either a witch being boiled in oil I or like a frog or like a mouse that stepped out of a helium factory. So yeah, I say so a whole bunch. I mention that in a lot of my videos. It's my catch word, go-to word. You see what I mean? Awkward turtles just all over the place. Just uh, 
Um, <laughs> Hi. That, if I know it was hard to see the line, I tried to do the lighting thing, but I have the wire line glued across the back of my bottom teeth because I don't have back teeth. <laughs> Um, I had two side teeth taken out when I was getting my braces done along with all four of my wisdom teeth. So I had six teeth taken out of my mouth and I was very reluctant about that. I was like, Do, are you 1000 billion percent positive? I have to have two perfectly healthy adult teeth taken out that aren't my wisdom teeth. But I... I guess my mouth is was too small. I didn't know why one couldn't be taken out. I didn't know why the wisdom teeth. They explained it at the time, but I was a very hesitant and begrudging person about that process. But I had those teeth removed, so I don't actually have back teeth on the bottom. And so to keep everything from shifting, I have a permanent retainer in the bottom. Now, if you get a permanent retainer, here are some things to keep in mind. One, make sure, 1000% make sure that they it feels good. If there's anything poking, prodding, coming out, or if there's a certain area after a week that feels unusually tight or like very, very tender, you need to tell your orthodontist and get that fixed because that will make you miserable. It'll be a constant permanent tooth pain unless you get it fixed you're paying him to take care of it so don't feel bad like oh you're inconveniencing him or you're inconveniencing yourself you'll have to go back and stay in the chair you will do yourself a favor by making sure everything is hunky-dory so that you don't have to because you could get up migraines it can affect your sinuses and just plain it's uncomfortable to deal with on a daily, every day, all night basis. Just don't do that to yourself for awkward reasons. It's going to be more awkward for you and it will be more expensive for you. Another thing is the glue that they use, you have to realize that you're eating and drinking and flossing and brushing the glue wears down so the adhesive when you have a permanent retainer you have to get the glue redone about every five or six years and if you think oh that what's the worst that can happen it will poke you and what happened to me was the very front of mine the glue was starting to wear down and the metal part poked out and started jabbing me and cut my tongue many times. Not a good thing. Um, and it can completely come off. If the glue starts to get done and you go through, say, childbirth, you could break the permanent retainer and it's just a mess you don't want to go through and then it's even more costly. Just get the glue redone. Eh. I'm sorry if that grosses you out. <laughs> But um, it is a, it's a very long process. It takes about an hour and a half, depending on how precise yours has to be, because you have to lay in the chair. They have to make sure your teeth are clean and they have to dry them. Then they put a wax mold over it, stick it on your teeth and hold it. And there's a ray that goes over your mouth. You have to hold it there. They have to take it out, actually create it. It's a process. But with your retainer, um, you want to keep it clean uh, so it, after like I would say I do it ev after every time I use my retainer <laughs> that way it's clean for the next round but what I like to do with my retainer is I like to brush it and you brush your retainer the way you brush your teeth and I'll show you a little sample of how to do that What is that? Um, huh? My retainer? Oh.
And that's all there is to it. Just regular toothbrush, regular toothpaste. And I would recommend not using your best whitening toothpaste because you don't need to whiten your retainer. Uh, just you want to get it clean. You want to make sure that any food or particles or anything that are in the side crevices are out because otherwise that's going to cause halitosis and it's gross. <laughs> Keep your stuff clean, especially because you're putting it in your mouth and it's coming out of your mouth. I wear mine at night because, uh, because I'm not eating, I'm not talking to people, I'm not going to interviews or meetings or anything. And another thing you can do to keep it, because sometimes even with you when you brush it, you might notice a weird kind of ah when you put it in your mouth after the first few times because it, it is going in and out of your mouth. I recommend using this stuff. This is Polydent, which is actually a denture cleaner. But for a cleaner, fresher, brighter denture, it will do just as good for your retainer and it's safe for your retainer. Um, so what you, and this is good for surface pores, which this is a slightly porous material. Think you can't feel anything when you're drinking with it but I got the Triple Mint Freshness. This isn't expensive. You get a whole bunch of these packets. The little packets look like this, the individual ones, and then the tablet inside looks like this. And these are made, these are three minute cleaning things. I like to leave mine in for five or six just to make sure it's clean three minutes is the minimum. And what I use is just this old, um, th my, I have Chinese food and our Chinese food comes in these plastic Tupperware-esque containers. So I just use an old one that I cleaned out. And I just do that like again, you get a whole bunch of these in there. You get 28 tablets and I do it and I do a polydent tablet like once a month um, because I, I do wash the retainer after every use and I rinse it with water right before I use it. So I this isn't necessary to use every single time you can if you want to. But since I only use it once a month and there's 28 tablets, I'm getting a lot of use out of the tablets and you don't have to continuously buy more and more and more. And it keeps them cleaner. It makes the, it helps your breath smell better. It helps the retainer feel better in your mouth. I like that mouth smell, you know what I mean? Where you can, you feel the smell in your mouth. It makes that so much easier. I talk with my hands a lot. And like I said, make sure you put them in here religiously. Don't, if you're going to be talking to somebody on Skype and you want to take it out for a minute, use this. Okay, do not neglect using your container for your retainer. <laughs> Rhyme. Because if you break or ruin or lose the retainer, do you know what happens? You have to get a new one. Otherwise your teeth could space out and all the money and time that you spent with your braces is down the drain. So you want to make sure that you have your retainer, use it as your orthodontist instructs you to. And you know, if you miss a week, if, if you're in the time period where you're supposed to use it once a week, if you miss a week, it's not the end of the world. Or like with me, I'm supposed to use it once every two weeks. If I go three weeks, it's not the end of the world. But if you lose or break your retainer, you are going to have to pay for it. And my retainer, and it can get more expensive from here, is a $175, $200 to get a new one because you didn't want to take two extra seconds to go, Do that for yourself because you do not want to have to repeatedly pay $200 or nearly $200 or more for your retainer replacement. You don't want to have to take the time out of your schedule to constantly get a new one made. And 
and you certainly don't want to have your teeth spread out and spaced out and your face look all weird after all the years and time you took with the braces. And that's what I have to say about retainers. <laughs> Bye.